talking tonight. Yeah. Uh, we dealt a little bit about the soul and we dealt a little bit about the spirit, mm -hmm. I mean about the body. And um, I'm reluctant to go to the spirit because you have, it's, it, soul. <laughs> that soul and body still it's dictating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. It's still dictating. And, 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 this is, and this is something that I understand. I understand that, you know, it's not going to come overnight, but I do understand the press and the pull and the push in trying. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Knowing that this is what's ailing me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I have a choice. I do. I do have a choice to which do what dominates me. Yeah. yeah. Right. I have that prerogative. Mm -hmm. So, and this is what I ask myself every time: Do I choose to let this dictate to me, or do I choose to let the Spirit of God talk to me and yes, bring me Jesus. to a place of yes, consciousness? God consciousness, God consciousness. Yeah. so I can be able to do what I need to do amen, amen. and even as you come into the house of the Lord yeah. that should be an expectation yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. spiritual expectation is automatic that automatic is there and yeah. but when we come in in a different way when we come in mm -hmm. with the dictation of soul and body Mm -mm. Then there is no expectation from that right. from them. They right. don't expect nothing. They don't. No. Uh -uh. They don't expect God to move. They don't expect God to meet them. Uh, oh no! All they can feel is the activities of the body, mm -hmm. and then and 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 what the soul is dictating. Amen. Amen. I don't care what your body feels like. Oh, you have a choice not to receive Amen. that. Amen. Amen. The spirit Amen. of tiredness upon you, 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 you know, you, you, you have a you, see because one thing about it, one thing about it, Thank if you're you getting adequate rest, then you have a choice. Yeah. That's but why. if you ain't getting adequate, ad, adequate, ad, adequate, adequate, <laughs> we got you. Time, <laughs> adequate rest. Yes, then it, it might be that you might deserve to be tired. Uh huh. <laughs> Come on. Because all the help in the world will help you. That's right. If you are the corporate behind your restlessness and your tiredness. Because like I said, yeah, we jump back and that's wisdom. Mm -hmm. That is wisdom. Right. Get some rest. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to bed. Why you going to bed and you ain't going to sleep? Why are you up all times of the night? Why are you strolling back and forth and, and up and down the stairs, up the stairs, in the kitchen, in the bathroom? What 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 you what you doing? And you got you got your a friend in the house with you. Yeah, and that friend is insomnia. Yeah. Oh, oh, thank you for delivering my God. Yes. Right. And that is a spirit. Yes, yes. And he's become your friend because he stays there all the time. Yes. He does. He comes and go when he wants to. Teach, boss, teach. <laughs> he comes and go when he wants to. He takes over when he wants to take over. Yep. Amen. Wow. And you thought you just was supposed to be like that. Nope. Mm -mm, we ain't got to receive that. No, you're supposed to have your head on the pillow. Peace. Yes. Peaceful and sleeping. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes, ma yes, ma if you're not peacefully sleeping, then there's something else ailing you. Come on. Mm -hmm. And Come you on. need okay. to help yourself get out of that ailment, whatever it is. Amen. You need to relieve yourself from it because you're too young. Mm -hmm. You're too young. Yes, ma'am. To be sleepless. Yes, ma'am. Right, ma'am. You're right. Yes, ma you're right. Yes, ma My right. God. Yes, mm. right. Yes, right. Yes, right. Somebody needs that. Y'all are not resting, and you cannot concentrate without rest. No, ma'am. You are over. You are in burnout. Over mm -hmm. burnout. Exhausted. Exhaust. Yes. And you are exhausted not because of what you're doing. You're exhausted because you ain't getting no sleep. That's right. what that is. And you blame it on other things and trying to cover it up. And you know you ain't sleeping. Mm -hmm. What you want to say is everything else that's burning you out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, nobody but God. Come on. My Lord. Be prophetic. Be prophetic. That's all right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The enemy is bringing spiritual embargoes yes. into your lives. Spiritual sabotage. And he's using the least things that you expect. And that's lack of rest. Right. Well, could you could that really be hindering me? Yeah. 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 You can tell how you feel when you get up. Yeah. You can yeah. tell how you feel when you're going through the day. Yeah. You can tell how you really feel when you're on your way to the house of God. Yeah. It really lays on you. Right. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. 
Oh, oh, oh. oh I, I mean, it's almost like, oh, if, mm -hmm. if, 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 if I'm telling you, if it wasn't like a ball and chain around your legs, uh -huh. around your neck, and if you, if it wasn't a shame, you would even come. Yep. Oh, tell the truth. Oh, mm -hmm. Lord, Lord, Lord. Lord. Yes, Lord. And you can tell the way you come in here that you that you just tired. Mm -hmm. God, you just tired. Holy mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Some of y'all ain't had a good night's sleep in a long time. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. Because you're worried about things that you cannot fix. Ooh, cannot fix. Wow. And then you are condemned because you messed up. Mm. And God ain't told you to receive no condemn condemnation. He ain't told you to do that. No, he didn't. If you ain't Christ Jesus, you are, you should be condemned about the mistakes that you've been that have been made in your life. I should not. No man. But you but but you let the enemy condemn you about the mistakes. Then therefore, if it brings about a place of sleeplessness, yeah, sleepless does. nights, yeah, uh -huh. and now you're tired. Now you can't. I mean, you can barely get up. You can barely make it. You can barely stay awake at work. Wow. If you weren't moving, if you weren't walking, some of y'all probably nodding at the table, at the desk. <laughs> what? <laughs> Amen. Right. Amen. Bless my supervisor. Amen. Bless, bless. Yeah. Oh, 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 amen. oh, what, 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 wait a minute, yeah. what, what, I'm praying, oh, I'll just say, I'll just say a prayer for y'all, and bless my supervisor, uh, amen, 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 but y'all need some, this is, this is, this is step 2017, so you're a rest, you better rest, yeah, yeah, you hear me? You need the rest. Get mine. Yes. I'm getting mine. I'm getting my rest. Yes, Lord. I got to have my rest. I don't know how you function without rest. I, I, I just don't know. I don't know how y'all do it. I shut it down. Right. But I know some of some of y'all something gonna have to come and shut you down. That's all. Put you on your back so you can sleep. Cause you can't do nothing else. Your hands tied, your feet tied, everything. Your whole body is laying on the bed and it can't move. It can't do nothing for itself. You don't want, don't you don't want to be in a, you don't want that to happen. No, you don't. So you take upon yourself to rest, saints of God. Rest. Amen. The enemies come to weary us and to wear us out. That's what he wants to do. He wants to wear you out. And he'll wear you out because you are not confident of, of wisdom. Yeah. A yes. lot of you, a lot of yes. you don't use wisdom. That's why you're worn out. Yes. Yeah. We don't use wisdom. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then a lot of you have been doing it for so long, you, it's, it's become a part of you. Right. And you think it's normal. Yes, sir. You think you think being tired is normal. You think that 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 little that stuff you do every day, twenty four seven, seven days a week, that stuff. You think that's normal. Mm -mm. No. But I'm gonna tell you. There is no clarity in tiredness. No man. None. Mm. None. You cannot, you will not, and you cannot make a sound decision when you're tired. You can't make them. You can't make them. Help somebody. Because tiredness will make sure that you don't. Let's go to the scriptures. We're going to talk about the Spirit of God tonight. I'm, I'm, I'm reluctantly to move there. But this is a place where I know that we ought to be, that we should be right now. Yes, ma'am. Um, a lot of us has been, have been in the Lord a long time. And, and I've been just been studying up on um, the salvation. I've been studying up on salvation because um, a lot of times people, have, people miss a, a portion of their salvation. You, you, you came to the Lord, okay, and you received Christ as your Savior. But the portion of the cross is missing out of your lives. Mm. 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 Wow. What he did on the cross. cross is missing from and if you just push back and recollect, because this is something that, that, that I am studying and I know to be true and I know to have happened in some people's lives, but then some people just come and accept Christ as their Savior, but they never ever accept him as the death, burial, and resurrection of their life. Yes. Mm. Yes. So when they don't accept him as the death, burial, and resurrection of their lives, then they are more prone to 
to, to, to focus in on the sins of their lives. Mm. Mm. When Christ has already died. Yes. <coughs> Done. Yes. Come on. For those things you're still doing. Yes. Mm. Okay. And because you have not received Christ as the death, burial, and the resurrection, mm -hmm. then you're not able to comprehend that you're already delivered. Yes. Yeah. Like Bishop was saying that we're still living in that first Adam. Mm -hmm. But the second Adam came to set us free. Yes. Yes. And he did free us. Yes, yes he did. Yes. Now it's yes. up to us mm -hmm. to accept that part of the cross, to accept that, that part of Jesus and what he did so that we will not concentrate on our sins. Yes. Our own sinning. Yes. I'm not saying none of y'all sin. I'm just saying that, that I, 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 I got a revelation of this. And that I understand that, that if this is not. If you don't get this portion. Mm -hmm. You're going to always keep doing what you do. Amen. Let's go to 1 Corinthians the second. Let's go to 1 Corinthians the second chapter. The 11th verse. We're going to start there. 1 Corinthians the second chapter. And the 11th verse. Mm -hmm. Second chapter and 11th verse. Ooh, my Bible is told up. That page is missing. Okay, put it up there for me. This is all from the Amplified Bible. It says, For what person perceives and knows and understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him? Mm -hmm. Just so. No one discerns, comes to know, and comprehend the thoughts of God except the spirit of God. Yes, ma'am. Now, even in that, he is letting us know. Go back to the, uh, uh, the next, the first verse I had. For what a person perceives. Now, the only way that a person can perceive mm -hmm. or know or understand what passes through a man's thoughts or his spirit is only by the spirit of God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's only by the spirit of God. And that at the same time, the individual that is spirit-led or indwelt by the spirit is able to understand what God is saying. Even in their, even in their own spirits, they're able to comprehend what God is saying and what God is doing. Now, if the man, if that individual, if the individual does not perceive or if the individual does not have the spirit of God on the inside of them or does not have um, um, an understanding of spiritual things, mm -hmm. then they will not activate themselves in the spiritual things. They will always activate themselves in that what they're comfortable with. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And this is something that as a, 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 a group of people or a saints of God or a saved body of believers are supposed to be spirit-led to the point where they are able to hear and understand what the Spirit is saying to them, through them, and for them. That's right. Yeah. If you cannot comprehend it, you can, and, and this is what I'm saying, we've been, we've been saved, we've been really saved a long time, and we have never ever really truly walked in the Spirit unless we were in the church. And the Spirit of God came down mm -hmm. inside the church. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we were able to, I mean, we just just to have a choice then because of where we were in the sanctuary where he dwells. But when we leave the sanctuary and leave the place where God dwells or where the spirit of God dwells and we go out from amongst this place, mm -hmm. then we find it hard to still comprehend spiritual things because and this is what will happen. If we're not, if we're not trained in spiritual things, then we're going to do the things that come natural. Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's right. Amen. And that's the reason why we always walk in the in, in, in the in the natural sense of our lives and not really perceiving or not really, excuse me, not really understanding uh, what passes through a man thoughts except with own spirit. So, but if we're spiritual, then we can then comprehend or discern what God is doing through another person's spirit. And I'm not talking about saved people. I'm talking about people who don't know God. Mm -hmm. What you are supposed you're supposed to be so equipped with the Spirit of God that you will be able to perceive and understand and know what is happening in the spirit of another man or woman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're supposed to be able to do that so we can help them. Somebody, 
Somebody came to me and helped me because they, they were full of the spirit and they perceived what was on the inside of me and they perceived what I needed. Mm -hmm. And they sought to those needs and they kept on until I was able to receive my, for myself what God had for me. Mm -hmm. So this is the reason why we find it hard to communicate with people uh, who don't know God or we find it hard to communicate with people, period, is because we cannot... Uh, uh, Understand who they are or understand where they are going or what their need is is because we are still walking in our natural selves. That's right. Amen. So we find ourselves focusing on our need. We find ourselves focusing on our uh, place where we are. We find ourselves focusing on our sins. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, if we feel like that, we cannot help anybody else is because we so messed up. Because I'm so messed up. Yes. But the spirit of you is saved. The spirit of you is what God can use. And what he will use if you train yourself to walk in the spirit. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And a lot of times, you know, we, we stand up and say, well, you know what? I've been in the church a long time. I've been in God a long time. It just seems like ain't nothing happened. I just seem like I'm just not doing anything. It seems like God's not doing it. Well, let me ask you this question. And I'm going to tell you because I, all you got to do is take it off of God because God is the perfect one. Yes, he is. We are the ones who can, you know, we put it on our own selves because we are the ones who are unperfect. So we never ever try to talk to God about what God or we, what we think God should be doing when we should be going to God and asking God to fix me. Yes. Yes. So I can be able to walk in the spirit so I can perceive and yeah. know and understand my sister or my yeah. brother yeah. or even that person who does not know God. And the reason why we're so caught up on things and so caught up on, uh, on all these situations and circumstances and going on is because we have left the piece of our salvation out of the picture. And we're focusing on the condemnation of our life. focusing upon what we can't do. We're focusing upon who we are. We're focusing upon why we're not here, why we're not there. We're focusing upon uh, uh, why God has not done this. But when we begin to focus on the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and know what he has done, I have the power to walk out of those things that condemn me into the power, into the spirit of God, that what I know I can see, perceive, and, and understand what God is doing in this spirit realm. This is where, and this is the reason why I have been teaching this, is because I need for you to move from where you are. Yeah. I need for you to come out from where you are and begin to walk in the spirit. That is the only way that you're going to see things move in your life that you are desiring to see. That's the only way you're going to be able to come out of where you are. That's the only way you're going to be able to know who you really are, is that you let God into you so that he can Bring out of you what is in you because of the God spirit that's lying dormant. Yes, ma'am. Because we don't watch ourselves, we'll find ourselves still letting that 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 other spirit rule and reign. Yes. And every day we don't like it. We don't like that spirit. Every day we have uh, a problem with it. Every day it torments us. Every day it says something to us. Every day it looks at us back in the mirror. And every day it's saying different things and making us feel different ways when God is trying to what? He's trying to balance out what you're supposed to be so that that spirit, soul and body will begin to work together so that the God can get the glory out of everything that he has created. Yeah. Amen. That's what he wants. Amen. That's what he wants. And that's what he wants from the people, from his people. Uh, 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 if you're going to be saved, you've got to be in tune with God. If you're going to be, this, this, this is not just coming to church and, and not just say that I, I, I'm in a church or I'm a part of something. You need to be a part of Jesus. That's what you've been missing all these years. You have been trying to be a part of a building. You have been trying to be a part of Dr. Jeffrey and I. You have been trying to be a part of sister so-and-so. You have been trying to be a part of brother so-and-so. But God says, I need for you to be a part of me or be with me or type with me so that we can get something done. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Teach, ma'am. 
So Proverbs 20, the spirit man, talking about the spirit man, Proverbs 20 and 27 says the spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord. Oh my God. The spirit, your spirit is the lamp of the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Your spirit is the lamp of the Lord. Yes, ma'am. And it says that searching all the inner depths of your heart. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So he's letting us know here that the lamp of the spirit, and when the spirit of God, the S, the capital S P I R I T, connect with the small S P R I T in you, there's an illumination that takes place. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. There's a light that comes on. It, it says that, like that, the spirit of a man is a lamp to the Lord. Once they kiss, there's a manifestation of light that follows you everywhere you go. And that's the reason why people look at it and say, well, I wonder why she's looking at me like that. I wonder why this is happening. There, the light of the lamp is searching the innermost parts of an individual. <coughs> and when the Spirit of God is strong like that, people don't want to be around you. People don't want to have anything to do with you because it's the Spirit of God that's illuminated up out of you. That's right. Amen. And it's searching the deep things. It's searching the innermost parts of an individual. Yes. Mm. So people shun or people move away or people don't want to be a part uh, uh, of who you are and what you're doing. Yes. So, so, so the physical and the biological and the mental and the emotional and the intellectual method of inventory won't work with the spirit of a man. Mm. Okay. You cannot use your physical with the spirit. You cannot use your biological with the spirit. You cannot use your mental with the spirit. You know, when you start using your mental with the spirit, then you become an occult or you become the acting up, trying to conjure up something in your mind or in your body. With the emotional part of yourself, you cannot communicate with the spirit of God. With the intellectual side of yourself, you cannot and it will not do uh, what God wants it to do because it cannot connect. There's nothing between them. Spirit begets spirit and flesh begets flesh. Come on. So we cannot access uh, in a natural and a physical, uh, emotional or intellectual way that the spirit, that the spirit part of us, we can't contact our spirit through intellectual and emotions. Mm. We cannot contact the spirit. No ma'am. You cannot contact the spirit. But the spirit of the man, that factor in the human personality which proceeds immediately from God is the lamp of the Lord. Amen. So when God wants to connect with you, he wants to connect with the spirit that's on the inside of you. Yes, so what he wants to do, he wants to go in. You know the old song the old people used to sing says, Lord, shine the light on me. Yes. If you find anything that shouldn't yes. be, take it out, Lord. Yes. That's what the spirit does. It comes your human spirit and it begins to probe and see if there's anything that's not like God and it begins to kill it or it begins to deal with you about it so that the light of God can illuminate out of you. There can be no light to illuminate out of you if the spirit is full of stuff that's not like God. This is true. This is true. Yes, God, I thank you. So the light goes in you, the spirit of God, the spirit, the spirit of God, the spirit of God goes inside of us into our innermost parts of us mm-hmm. and it probes and it looks and it sees everything that's there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see, notice um, when Adam and Eve sinned, mm-hmm. they find themselves to be naked. They came to them yeah. sent their senses because they were spiritual. They were walking in the spirit. They were born of the spirit and, they, and, and everything about them was spiritual. Yes, but it's, look, at the minute they sinned, they began to hide themselves. Yes, they did. Yes, ma'am. And, the, and, and what happened was God came and asked them, well, Adam, Adam called upon him, Adam, Adam, where are thou? And Adam says, I'm here, Lord, I'm here, Lord. But at the same time, he was hiding because of what he had done. Okay? So it's the same way with us. If, if there's things in our lives, it will make us hide from God. Yes. yes, it will. It will push us back from where God will have us to be. When, when, we, we, when we should push forward to God, when we should know that there is therefore no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. 
See, you have to understand that when you got saved, you got saved for sure, and it was branded, and nothing can take that away from you. But then at the same time, you have to understand that if you don't continue in the ways of God, if you don't continue in the word of God, then you will find yourself not you find yourself not being able to do that what God has called you to do. You can always go back to that same old place where I told you that the death, burial, and resurrection had already killed and already healed that. But you can't get from it because you don't understand who you are. You don't understand that God has already did what he's done. And that it's a done deal. Done deal. So why do I keep going back doing it? Yes, yes. Why do I keep going back? Because I don't understand what the cross means. Oh my God. My God. See, I don't really understand. See, I looked at the passion. I looked at the movie, The Passion, and I understood what Jesus went through. And the reason why we felt so, so, so overwhelmed by what was happening to Jesus was because we connected to him. Our spirits connected to him. But as soon as we were through with the movie, uh -huh. something else transformed and went back to the same place it was before we saw the passion. Amen. Amen. But this is what I want you to see and understand is that the passion needs to reside in your heart and your mind and your spirit and your body forever. That way, every time you think about him being whooped and then your, your flesh tries to act up and your flesh tries to do this and that or say this and that, the moment you know that he's been whooped with the many stripes to kill and to save us and to do away with everything that we, we are going through right now, we'll find ourselves taking a choice not to go there. We'll find ourselves taking a choice not to say that. Yeah. We'll find ourselves taking a choice not to even move that way. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yes, yes, that's Amen. right. Amen. Because the cross is burning in me. The cross is burning in me. The cross is burning in me now. Yeah. And when the cross begins to burn in an individual, that individual makes the choice to follow Jesus. That individual makes the choice not to look at that what they're not supposed to look at or to go there where they're not or to gossip or the backbite. Those things that we know that are in us, we choose not to do them because we are what? Attached to the cross. So I choose not to. I love God. I love Jesus. Jesus loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son. God loved me so much that he gave his only begotten son. If I can understand how much I'm loved. Yes. 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 I can get over the rape session. If I can understand how much I'm loved, I can get over the unforgiveness. If I understand how much Jesus loves me, I can get over those rejection periods in my life and run with Jesus like I ain't never ran with him before. If I can understand how much I'm loved, it doesn't matter what anybody says to me. It doesn't matter what they do to me. I understand that I sit high up on a pedestal with Jesus because of his love. And can't nothing turn that down. Yes. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Can't nothing change me. Because Jesus saved me. Nobody else has saved me. Nobody else has brought me out. Yes. Nobody else has cured me. Nobody else has delivered me. It was Jesus who delivered me. Therefore, I can stand through anything because if he delivered me from that, he can deliver me from this. Yes, God. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So when I realize the cross, the burial, the resurrection, I stand firm on the assurance that I am saved, that I am sanctified, and that I am filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I stand firm that nothing can change me. I stand firm that nothing can move me. I stand firm to know that Jesus is on my side. And if he's on my side, he's more than the world against me. Jesus. 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 You will never understand that. You will never know that as long as you are in the soul. As long as your soul realm dominates. As long as your body dominates. 